I just got back from my trip from Florida. My plane almost crashed and it was these souls in purgatory that protected us and I believe possibly even saved us. If you want to support this channel in any way, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee. Now you may think I'm being a little over dramatic, but spoiler alert, I'm still alive and we survived. But that was quite an ordeal. So let me tell you what happened. We were flying in from Fort Lauderdale, we flew into Miami, we left from a different airport, and the pilot warned us that there was going to be some turbulence throughout the flight and especially towards the end of the flight as we were coming into Texas. I thought he meant kind of in the middle of the flight, but it was really at the end. So we were getting towards the end of the flight. We were about 15 to 20 minutes from landing. And the wind, you can hear the wind howling around us. And normally when you're coming in for a landing, you're wanting this feeling of going straight, right? You know, like you're going to hit that uh, that runway perfectly. And our plane was going side to side. You could feel it kind of, kind of going up and down. You could feel that the pilot did not have a good grasp on it, that 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 wind was so strong. Well, we were coming in for a landing and we were probably several hundred feet off uh, off the ground. And whenever I'm landing or taking off in a plane or kind of those initial stages, which from what I hear are the most dangerous, I'm always praying, always invoking the guardian angels of those on the plane, the Blessed Mother, etc. You know, and I think about things. And one of the unfortunate things of doing a lot of videos about purgatory is I know what happens when you die and the seriousness of that moment. In fact, uh, as, as all of this was happening, that, that line from one of those videos from that priest that appeared to Princess uh, Eugenie, I believe, where he talked about the moment of death was going through my mind. This trembling and a worship of the perfection of God and a sinking into the purification. That's not exactly what he said, but I'm paraphrasing. I was thinking about that. Well, as he was about to land, he pulled up and that freaked me out. I've probably been on hundreds of flights. I've flown a lot. I don't know if I've ever had it happen where we were only a couple hundred feet. Like we could see the airport. We were right over the airport and he pulled up and my heart sank. Like I just sort of almost froze up and I didn't even want to look over at my wife because you know, when you look at someone, when it's a really serious situation and it almost like confirms this is really happening. I thought, what is going on? I couldn't even think about what was going on. My wife said that she was thinking, is this a terrorist doing something crazy or did the landing gear not work? And uh, when we when we went up, then he kind of started turning and you could just feel the plane being moved around. I kind of thought to myself, I, th I think the wind didn't let him land. It was shaking the plane kind of everywhere. He later, after several minutes, because I think he had to calm himself probably, and uh, then he made an announcement. He kind of put this little blue light saying, the pilot will make an announcement. And after he said that, he took another five minutes, after which at least I was, and I think the rest of us were holding our breath. What is he going to say? Is there something wrong? And I was thinking, this is not planned for him to take off again. Is he going to crash into a plane? Um are they supervising this? What's going on? And, and and then he told us that there was a huge gust of wind. It was not safe for me to land. I had to pull up. And and as he's he's going up and he's kind of turning sharply to circle around the airport, and then you're getting this blue light go off constantly. It was from people in the back. Later on, we ran into a passenger um, when we were getting our bags, and they were in the back, and they said everyone in the back was sick and throwing up it, their poor daughter. Their poor daughter threw up all over herself. And that sort of told us, we were in the middle of the plane, how, how really serious this was. Then as we went up that second time, I began invoking this particular group from the souls in purgatory that I now want to tell you, because I want to dedicate the entirety of Lent 2024 to these souls in purgatory, to priests. Lent 2024 is for the priests. So this uh, viewer sent me a really beautiful story, which I will share with you. And when she shared it and I read it, I thought, this is our theme. This is what we're going to do. Because priests are criticized here on earth and then forgotten when they're in purgatory. Either because people think that they're in heaven or maybe, I don't know what, whatever is the reason, they're forgotten. 
and we need to not. And what this person was trying to convey to me, the story that I will tell you, was that if they were consecrated in life, they are consecrated in death. And their intercession was powerful. And at this point, as we're going back away from landing, and I'm like, I just want to land. Can you imagine what I was feeling? I was like, I'm pulling out the ace. And I start invoking them. And I was thinking, have I said this out loud? Does the devil know that I'm going to do a Lent about the, the priest in purgatory and he's trying to bring this plane down or something crazy? And I started invoking them, priests in purgatory, holy priests in purgatory, pray for us. Calm the winds of the earth and give us a safe landing. And I'm praying and praying. Praise God, we were landing at the hour of mercy at 3 p.m. There's no better time to land. And then we flew around for maybe like another 15 or 20 minutes, the longest 15 or 20 minutes of my most recent life. I was so tense and uh, everyone in the plane was praying. We were all really stressed out. I was, my legs were shaking. We came around the second time and as you can imagine, we landed. Praise God through their prayers and intercession. And I think the lesson for me was, you never know who's behind things. Was that the devil? Was that God? I don't know. But looking at it from a positive light, God wanted to bring me to my knees. And he sure did. And he wanted me to experience their protection. I was thinking a lot of things. I was thinking about what will my judgment be like? Will people pray for me? Will people even know? I was thinking about the fear that the apostles felt on the boat. That's exactly what I was feeling. And so I was calling upon those holy priests in purgatory. And I was imagining all of them in that great fire, in the great purgatory, or in the second purgatory, or whichever level they're in. And I was having and asking their consecrated hands to touch our plane and to protect it. And they came through. And I want you to experience their power because they're powerful in purgatory. Can you imagine if you're part of their deliverance, how powerful they will be for you when they're in heaven? This whole of Lent 2024, I will be making as many videos as I can about priests in purgatory, what they suffer, how we can deliver them, and the power of their prayers. And now here, without much further ado, is the story from the viewer. One night in the summer of 2016, when my son Nathaniel was nine years old, he woke me up very upset. He said that in a dream, he had seen all the priests in purgatory. There were so many of them, he said, of so many different ethnicities. He saw many levels, and it was dark and foggy. In particular, he said he had seen Father Kuroda, a priest we knew who had recently passed away. My son said Father wasn't permitted to speak to him, but he said he could see he was suffering. A different priest asked him to please pray for priests in purgatory, and to tell people to pray for them because nobody offers prayers or masses specifically for this intention. My son was continuously crying and said the Lord allowed him to feel a moment of the soul's suffering, and it was unbearable. He would not go to sleep until I found a rosary to pray specifically for these souls. The rosary for priests in purgatory consists of praying the sorrowful mysteries plus a sixth mystery, meditating on the wounds of Christ. Following this incident, I called a friend of mine, Maria. I'm bilingual, but she spoke only Spanish, while my son, who had this dream, only spoke English. I told Maria what he had dreamed about Father Kuroda, who was a mutual friend. Maria said she would pray for him and that everything would be okay. One month later, my oldest son, Augustine, told me that Nathaniel dreamed he saw Father Kuroda again, except this time he appeared to him in white priestly vestments and a gold cross on his vest and with two angels. Father specifically thanked him for the prayers and masses he received. When I learned this, I called my friend Maria and wanted to tell her what Nathaniel had dreamt. Before I could say anything, Maria told me she was happy I called because she had wanted to tell me that her friend had offered 30 Gregorian masses for Father Kuroda. She also told me that right after the 30 Gregorian masses were offered, her friend that had offered them dreamt that Father Kuroda was in white priestly vestments with a gold cross on his vest and two angels, and had thanked her for the masses and prayers. I was amazed to hear this, because neither Maria 
nor Nathaniel spoke the same language and had not communicated with each other in any way. And yet Nathaniel and her friend had the same dream. Praise God for his mercy. She goes on to say, We already know how powerful the prayers of the souls and priests are. Imagine the power of the prayers of a consecrated priest whose soul is marked forever. God honors their priesthood and the way they served him in this life. This Lent, devote yourself to praying for the souls in purgatory and watch what will happen.